Today we are exploring five of the most important things we can do in PowerPoint to give our lessons more power and less pointless. I've arranged them from position number five to position number one. These are purely my own preferences. If you have different preferences, please let me know in the comments. And please also check out my Udemy course on these topics. I've opened some additional free preview tutorials. Links are in the description. In position number five, create your own custom shape. We all know that PowerPoint has a healthy selection of shapes, from basic shapes to arrows to banners. But what if we need an arrow and none of the available ones are just right for you? We will create our own custom shaped arrow. Steps to follow. Select some basic shapes and arrange them so that they resemble your new unique form. Select them all and click on Shape, Format and Merge Shapes. Click on Unite to create a brand new freeform object from the basic ones that you started with. You can take this technique a step further and combine your unique shape with another shape or even a picture to create a cutout in your picture. First, select your picture, then select the shape that you want to cut out from your picture and go to Shape, Format, Merge Shapes and Combine. In position number four, insert links into your slides. Links make your PowerPoint non-linear and links give your students freedom to explore and get to grips with the material on their own terms. Steps to follow. Start by creating your lesson material. Good pre-planning will help with the structure. Insert shapes on a slide that will resemble a menu structure. Create one slide for each menu item. Remember to put in proper titles for each slide. It makes the linking easier. Insert links into the shapes to the slides that you have created. Remember to also create a link back to the home page so that learners will find their way home again. Make a copy of the shapes and paste to the slides that you created in step two. You can also insert well-chosen links to external resources that students can explore on the web. In position three, Use animations. If a picture is worth a thousand words, moving pictures will be worth 10,000 words. Each object on your presentation can have multiple animations. The latest version of PowerPoint have a morph transition effect that can be very useful in learning material. Steps to follow. Animations require careful planning and design, but all topics usually represent systems that undergo changes over time. Demonstrating those changes with animations are ideal. Animations are much more than entrance, emphasis and exit effects. By all means, experiment with those, but try and make a system come alive with animations. Click on the object that you want to animate. Select the animation effect that you want. Decide what should trigger the animation. Decide when and what should happen by setting the start time, duration, and number of repetitions of each action. The slow start and slow end option can be used to simulate falling or bouncing objects. Remember that PowerPoint sets these by default, so sometimes an object may appear to not move when it was supposed to, so you'll have to come and fix matters. Don't be limited by one animation per object. You can add more than one animation to each object, but remember to use the Add Animation button. When working with path animations, remember that the green dot signifies the start point of your movement and the red dot the end point. By carefully manipulating these, one can achieve multiple movements of the same object. An important feature to remember is the Animation Painter. 
After you have carefully worked out a complex set of movements for an object, you can easily paint those onto other objects. It is always good practice to name all your objects on your slide in a sensible way. Otherwise, the animation pane will become very confusing. In position number two, create an online quiz in PowerPoint with the help of Google Forms or Microsoft Forms. If you don't have access to Microsoft Forms, don't stress, all the steps we'll see in a moment can also be implemented with Google Forms. Steps to follow. Go to forms.office.com and sign in with your Microsoft 365 account or go to forms.google.com and sign in with your Gmail account. In Microsoft Forms, click on New Quiz. Give your quiz a title. I'm calling this one The Conversational Theory of Teaching and Learning. Click on Add New to add a new question. Now you have several options of question types. To see how it works, I'm opting for the Likert question type. Complete the statements and the options required for a Likert question type. And if you want to add more questions, click on Insert New. There are obviously no correct answers to a Likert question type. But for a different short answer type, you can click on My Answer and then insert the correct answer and give a score for the answer. When you have all your questions set up, click on Collect Responses and copy the link that is created. Go back to your PowerPoint lesson and insert this link in something that your students can click on to launch the quiz. Later, when you go back to Microsoft Forms, you will see some responses coming in. Position number one. Use your PowerPoint lesson in conjunction with H5. H5P provides a rich mix of interactivities that you can merge with PowerPoint. In the last step of the steps that I'm about to describe, you'll see how learners can get feedback from their H5P interactivity. The steps to follow. Start by creating your PowerPoint lesson. Bearing in mind that you will be saving it as an MP4 file. Much of this video that you are watching now was created as I described below. You will have to get all your timings and transitions right, including any audio and video that may be in your presentation. You can record audio directly into PowerPoint or you can record clips in Audacity. I prefer Audacity because then I can clean up the background noise that may creep in. I make one sound clip per slide. Save your final presentation as an MP4 file. If you want to, use a video editing tool such as ClipChamp to make additional changes to your video if required. With ClipChamp, I can bring in some extra effects not available in PowerPoint, even additional voices. It is free and you should try it out. There is a link to my Udemy course in the description where I talk about PowerPoint and ClipChamp and how they can work together to create great resources. Once you have an MP4 file that is less than 16 megabits, head over to h5p.org and register a free account. Read through the ample tutorials and guides. Select the content type that you want to create. Choose interactive video and follow the instructions to upload your MP4 file. Creating the interactivity itself involves a number of tasks. One need to decide on scoring strategies, feedback criteria, and how the interactivity behaves when the learner gets it right and how it behaves when the learner doesn't. There are also a number of question types that you can employ. I must be honest, this is not a trivial task. So start with a small project and try only one or two types. My Udemy course that I mentioned before have some free preview tutorials on H5P. So look at those please. Finally, in the end, once a learner has worked through the interactivity, he will see what he knows and what he does not yet know. 